Hi, um, welcome to my talk. Chronix is a long-term storage for Prometheus. Um, my name is Moritz Kamera. I work as a software engineer at um, QAware in Munich, Germany. Um, that's where the Oktoberfest is. <laughs> um, if you want to contact me, um, just shoot me a tweet at, at phxql. It's on the bottom left of the slide. So I assume you never heard about Chronix, but that's no problem because I'm going to introduce it to you. Um, that's the current state of the art um, for monitoring cloud native applications. Um, you have you're running cloud native applications. Um, you use Prometheus um, to pull the metrics in there, and then you can use it for real time monitoring and alerting. Um, the default retention day is about 14 days in Prometheus. After that, um, the data gets discarded. Um, so nothing more to do because everything is covered. We don't think so. Because imagine <coughs> you want to store it um, more than 14 days. For example, store it a half a year, or store it a year, or something like that. Um, then you could use um, another time series database um, behind Prometheus. So Prometheus is scraping those metrics. Um, it uses the default retention day of, of 14 days to store the data, and it also pushes the data into your other um, database. And that's where Chronix come into play, because Chronix, it's um, a lossless uh, long-term storage, and it can store your data literally forever. Um, it's um, as long as you give it enough um, hard disk space, it can store it. We have um, we we uh, later see the storage requirements for that. Okay, why have we created Chronix? Um, that's one of our products. Um, our company um, helps other companies um, to uh, find problems in their production. Um, you see a graph of a running um, system here, and there are some hiccups in there. And um, now imagine you don't want to uh, analyze just the last 14 days, but um, like a year or something like that to um, find problems before that. Um, and imagine you're not monitoring just one system or, or some systems, but you're monitoring your fleet of IoT devices or something like that, which generates huge amounts of metric points. So that's for the motivation. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Chronix, um, how we build it, um, what's in there, and um, the performance, um, how we did the integration with uh, Prometheus. And then I have a showcase for you, which combines Prometheus, the Chronix ingester, which is um, needed for the Prometheus, um, Chronix, and the Grafana dashboard, which we heard in the talk before. So um, that's a uh, high-level uh, architecture view of Chronix. I'm going to start at the top, uh, at the bottom. Um, that's how da data gets into Chronix. Um, we have, you can, for example, uh, collect data from Logstash or from Fluentd or from Collectd or um, using the ingestion bridge. Um, the ingestion bridge is um, if you have a software which generates, for example, um, Kairos DB metrics, you can point the, the software to the ingestion bridge endpoint, and that will um, make the translation between Kairos DB format into Chronix format. So you can just point it anywhere. It, it also su uh, supports OpenTSDB, InfluxDB, Kairos, Graphite, or the native uh, Prometheus format. That's the Prometheus text format, not the protobuffers one. Um, then the Chronix core. It consists of um, three systems. Um, they are not bundled together. You can use them uh, at their own. For example, Chronic Storage, um, it's based on Lucene. Lucene is a Java framework for indexing text data, something like that. Um, the Chronic Storage, for example, if you don't need a big cluster server system but want to run it embedded, you can use um, the Chronic Storage part. The Chronic server part is based on um, Apache Zoller, which is a NoSQL data store, um, which, which you can 
scale on multiple clusters, uh, high availability, failover, something like that. Um, the Chronic Server Inteller uses the Chronic Storage format, but also um, utilizes Solar to store the data. And on top of that, if you have really, um, if you have many data, you can also use um, the Spark integration. Spark is uh, to um, massively multi um, analysis of, of, of the underlying solar. And on top of that, you can use um, Apache Zeppelin, for example, um, with, in combination with Spark, or you can use the um, Chronix Analytics suite, which is um, ongoing work, or you can use the Grafana dashboard. And today I'm going to show you um, the ingestion bridge, how to get data from Prometheus into Chronix. We um, also take a look at the Chronix server part, and we take a look at the Grafana in the showcase. So I talked about a time series database. What's a time series database? Um, my first definition is um, a sample. And a sample consists of a timestamp and a value. Um, the value could be any kind of object. It's, it's not just a double or something like that. It, it can everything. My second definition is what is a time series? And a time series is an arbitrary list of chronological ordered samples. So the time series consists of multiple of those. Third definition is what's a chunk? And the chunk is just a part of a time series. So you take that, split it, and then you get multiple chunks. And my last definition, uh, Flipboard is a little bit in a way, a time series database. What's a time series database? It's a specialized database, which is, um, which is specialized for storing and retrieving time series in an efficient and optimized manner. So you can take your time series and, and put it in your, to your time series database. That's a high level overview of the Chronix architecture. Um, it consists of multiple steps. The first step, which is optional, is semantic transformation. Um, <laughs> there is 68 billion data points. And for example, you can use the semantic transformation to downsample that. If you don't need um, the resolution, you can, you can shrink it. Or you can enrich the data with, um, from additional data sources. The next step is it creates chunks from that 68 billion points because to store 68 billion points in a, in, a, in a noise scale database isn't such a great idea if you get 68 billion documents. That's too much for them to handle. So you create chunks. For example, we created 1 million chunks, which all consists of 68,000 points. And the chunks have attributes, for example, um, from which host they came, which metrics they store, something like that. And the third step, it applies basic compression. So we take the chunk and we just compress it. And because it's uh, timestamp value pairs, it achieves a very high compression rate. In that case, 69% compression. We see some details later. And then you take a multidimensional storage and store them. Uh, in our example, if you use the Chronic server, it uses Solar to store them. How's a record look like? Here you have a, your compressed chunk. A chunk consists of a time series, which is a timestamp and a value. In that case, numeric, I come later to that. Or you can also store traces, for example, a timestamp and an exception. Or you can store logs, which is a timestamp and your log data, or any data you want. Um, Chronix isn't interested in what you store in it. Then you have some technical fields. Um, you need them for SOLA, for example, a document ID and a version for optimistic logging. <coughs> um, that's a start and an, and an end. Um, because you store chunks in it, that's the start point of the first time series point in the chunk, and that's the one of the last. And then you have optional attributes. 
for example, from which host the data came, where, from which process the data came, to which group it belongs, which metrics is stored, and what's the max value. Um, it's the pre-computed max value of that chunk. Um, you can add attri uh, arbitrary attributes. Chronix doesn't matter. Um, the attributes are all indexed through Solar, and you can search for them. And like I said, the max is a uh, pre-calculated value. Now, only storing is a bit boring. So uh, Chronix also uses aggregations. For example, you can uh, query it for the min value of the metrics, for the max value of the metrics. We have an average. You can sum them. You can count them. You can uh, calculate percentiles, standard deviations, um, the first value, the last value, or um, assign difference. Then it also uh, supports transformations, which is, um, for example, the bottom five values or the top five values of that matrix. You can calculate moving averages for about um, in a five-minute window, for example. You can um, scale them up, scale them down. Um, you can also downsample down them. Uh, I said here you can you can downsample them before you put them into the data store. You can downsample them afterwards. It also supports, uh, supports analysis, which is a trend analysis using a linear regression model um, to determine if you're, um, for example, if you're using or if you're plotting your uh, memory usage, if the memory usage is, is um, increasing over time. That is your trend analysis. Or you can find an outlier analysis, um, for example, to find um, time windows where the um, memory consumption is much higher than, than other times. Um, you can also use a frequency analysis, which is very cool. Um, for example, if you're um, measuring your exception rate, and it's like one exception in every five minutes, and you use a frequency analysis on that matrix, and then you have in your five minute um, window 100 exceptions, it will get flagged. So you can see the um, time windows where, where you have more exceptions in your production systems. You can you also use fast dynamic time warping, warping which is um, used to um, compare uh, time series. If you have time series from two different server systems and you want to see if they are identical, if they are behaving the same, you can use that method. Or you can use the symbolic aggregate appro approximation, which is um, the, if you're uh, search for it, it, it's also called SAX. Um, that's used for a similarity and pattern search. So I said, you can store anything in Chronix. How does that work? Um, here's the Java interface for the time series converter. And here you get, it's, it's uh, generic over T. And here you have a time series chunk, which is the generic T. And it just it has to create a binary time series. The binary time series is that part which is stored in the chunk. And that's the other way around. You, you get the binary time series. You get a query start and a query end. That, that's what the user wants to uh, start and end, because it's chunked. And then you get your generic back. So you can store anything in Chronix. Chronix, by default, because that's the main use case for us, has support for numeric values. It's just here over, over double. So you can put there in a chunk of doubles or a list of doubles, and it gives you the binary re representation. But there is more to come. OK. How to run that stuff? Here's your computer. You need a Java 8. Um, you download the Chronix distribution. The Chronix distribution includes um, a Solar. And the Solar internally uses Lucene. And um, Chronix is implemented as Solar plugins. So you have a, if you know Solar, you have a query handler. You have the ingestion handler, which uh, translates the data from those databases into Chronix. You have a compaction handler, which is um, used to compact data into chunks. Um, more on that later. And you have the retention handler. Um, there you can specify throwaway data 
um, after one year or something like that, or downsample down data after one year. And if you want to make queries, you have a Go client and you have a Java client. And uh, this is the ingestion interface for the other databases to import data into Chronix. A little bit code, um, how to get data out of Chronix. So first you just create a um, Solar client and then you wrap that Solar client into a Chronix client. Um, that's your converter. That's, this is the implementation of the interface I, I showed you two slides before. Um, that converts the binary data into a list of doubles. <coughs> and then you can create a Solar query which says, um, I'm interested in all metrics which contains uh, load. And then you call the stream method and you get a Java 8 stream and you can work with the data. Or you can also add some aggregations or functions. That's all that stuff here. For example, we are interested in the max value of the metrics and the min value of the metrics, um, how many metrics there are and uh, signed difference. Um, here is an example. If your first metric value is 20 and your last metric value is minus 80, you will get minus 80. So uh, it falls over time. And then you also call the stream method and you get a Java 8 stream. Yes? Yes. Um, if you run solar clustered, then you have a solar master node, and that is where the aggregations uh, were, are aggregated. Yeah, um, but you can also use, if you have many data, you can also use Spark, which distributes that whole over your solar clusters. In the case of percentiles, it won't work, but in max values, it, it will work. So there are many time series databases. Why should you use Chronix? Um, Chronix is created in cooperation with a, a German university. Um, if you're interested in the hard fact, that's from their paper. Um, um, yeah. If you're interested, just come uh, to me after the talk. Um, we have evaluated Chronix against InfluxDB, OpenTCB, and KairosDB. And that's the important one. All databases are configured as a single node database. They are not running cluster. They are running on one machine. Yeah? Kairos runs uh, as a Cassandra backend, right? So you can run Kairos as a container and store it in Cassandra instance. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the, the databases all support uh, clustering, but they are configured to run as a single node. If you take at the query times, um, in the paper, a query mix has def uh, is, uh, was defined um, about uh, usual queries which are run against time series databases. And in this query mix, uh, Chronix is in the bottom tier 73% to 90 time, uh, 92% faster on data retrieval. And it's um, in the query mix case, 80 to 97 percent faster if you want to query data out of Chronix. If you take the storage demand for, you have a 108 gigabyte raw CSV file and you want to import it in the database, and in Chronix it uses 8.7 gigabyte space on disk, and that is compared to the other databases uh, 20 time to uh, 20 percent to 84 percent less than the other databases. And if you're concerned about um, main memory, um, Chronix takes one to one six time less memory than the best alternative. These are the hard facts, um, all in that research paper 
if you're interested in that paper, just come to me afterwards. Okay, now I've talked about chronics. What about Prometheus? So, to get it work. Prometheus, it collects the metrics from the service, it writes them to the default storage, and it also writes them in our configuration through the standard remote write interface to the chronics ingester. The chronics ingester, which sits in the middle between chronics and your Prometheus, um, it's used to collect the samples from the Prometheus and r write them into Prometheus in batched mode. Um, it does that because chronics isn't so good if you feed it um, one sample at a time. It prefers to get them batched. And that's what the chronics ingester does. It also writes checkpoints to the disk um, before a chunk is full um, uh, to prevent if that is crashing that you lose your metrics. Now some scenarios. Um, this is running Prometheus using Chronix on a single host. You use your Prometheus to get your um, metrics from your systems. It writes them, it writes the samples using the remote write interface in the Chronix ingester. Um, this does some batching and writes the, writes the batches into the Chronix server. Afterwards, you can query the Chronix server for data. <coughs> Here you have, if you have multiple Prometheus, you just um, configure multiple Chronix ingesters. They are all do the batching and they pipe into one Chronix server. You can also do that. You have Prometheus on other hosts running. You use the Chronix ingester and the Chronix server on a single node. You just point them into one Chronix ingester that starts the batching and writes it to the Chronix server. Yeah. In that case, Chronix is a single node, but we come to the uh, full cloud mode where you shard it. Okay. You can also use multiple nodes for Chronix. Um, you can define that in, in Solar. You can shard on the metrics field or you can shard on some uh, ID field or something like that. Because that's based on Solar, um, we, we all get the, the solar sharding features for free. Here you can see a load balancing example. You have multiple Prometheus. You all point them to an Nginx load balancer. Um, it balances them over to Chronix ingesters. They do the batching and they write it to the Chronix server. Or the full cloud mode, you use Prometheus pipe them into Nginx load balancer, which, sh which balance them over uh, multiple Chronixes, and then you write the data to a uh, um, Chronix master or a Solar master, and Solar does the sharding and distributes them over multiple Chronix servers. So what's the Chronix ingester? Chronix ingester is just a small Go program. It has uh, 700 lines of code. It's because it's a Go program, you can just copy and execute it. It sits between your Prometheus and your Chronix server um, using uh, the remote write interface. Um, you, you just configure your host and your port and the ingest or and Prometheus remote write does the rest. The main feature is it batches the samples in memory. So here you get samples, out comes um, batches for the Chronix server. Because Chronix needs, needs large chunks to um, work well. And you can also configure the max batch H. It's crash and restart re resilience. Um, for example, you're piping samples in there and then it crashes and it hasn't write all the batch. Your data isn't gone because it writes checkpoints to disk and restores them automatically if you restart it. So here you can see how that works. In comes the samples. It stores them in the in-progress chunk. And if the chunk is, is full and ready to write to, to Chronix, it gets written out to Chronix. And Chronix can work with the data. It indexes that. And that's it. So 
that's the reason why Prometheus and Chronix are really good um, to work with each other. Because Prometheus uses so-called labels to store dimensional values. And if you compare it to Chronix, it uses attributes, which are also key value pairs to store dimensional values. So the, the only difference is, is it's called labels and it's called attributes. It's the same feature. The, uh, the labels are added dynamically. And um, in Chronix, as, it as it's based on Solar, you can use a, sh a schema, but you can also use the schema less mode, which adds dynamic fields. So um, they are also added dynamically. <coughs> and Prometheus stores sample pairs um, for an, a pair of a timestamp and a value. And this is also supported in Chronix. It also so, um, uh, stores a timestamp and a value. And that's um, how, uh, that's why the Chronix ingester is so simple. It just takes the data, it batches it, writes it out. It has, um, it doesn't have to do some transformation or something like that. Um, that's a Chronix schema. That's some um, solar internals. It's, n it's not very important. Um, here you see the fields. For example, the ID field, the start field, the end field, um, the data field, which is uh, binary. And here you see um, <laughs> a dynamic field, which is used to store the tags. So um, if you store um, the Prometheus label, it gets translated into a Chronix label. For example, if you use the Prometheus label host, it gets the dynamic field host underscore s for a dynamic field. And then you can query for that. Now my showcase. It uses Prometheus. This writes the samples into the Chronix ingester, and that writes the batches into the Chronix server. And we put a Grafana dashboard, which um, uh, reads data from Prometheus and which also reads data from the Chronic server. Um, a few words about our performance. It's 11 days of data in the slides. Um, in my live presentation, it's, it's more data. But here there were um, 12 mil, 112 million samples. Um, in Prometheus, that's about 786 megabyte on disk. And in Chronix, it's 265 megabyte on disk. Um, without compaction, I mentioned compaction earlier. Compaction works by you specify how many points you want per chunk. And um, Chronix takes those uh, data points and um, chunks them. And here you can see how that um, has an effect on your disk usage size. That's the default um, chunking. Uh, default means no chunking. It just takes the batches as they come in. Yeah. It just takes 100 data points per chunk and then cuts the chunk. And here you can see if you run 100 points per chunk, you end up with 357 megabytes. And if you run 500,000 points in chunk, you, all, you just get 119 megabytes because the compression is more efficient. The, the caveat is if you uh, store 500,000 data points per chunk, your um, query time gets higher because it has to unpack 500,000 data points if you query the data. Um, no. On a technical level, it's all stored in a solar document. And a solar document is like a row in a relational database. And here in the chunk field, it determines how many data points of your time series are stored in there. If you store one point per document, and if you store 68 billion points, then you end up with 68 billion solar documents, which is not very good for scale. But where is it? Here. But if you use a chunk size of 
um, 68,000 points, it aggregates your, um, your 68 billion points into 1 million documents because every document contains 68,000 points. And that's much better for your scalability of your solar. Yeah. Here? Hmm, I'm not sure. That's the default config. Yeah. So there, there is actually a different compression method. Uh, ah, OK. That is, uh, would be similar to ours. OK. Um, it's GZIP compressed protocol buffers. Okay. And is there any, so is it, it, it's mostly a, a vector of raw values. Is there any run length encoding or any other sort of yeah, they, done on? Yeah, there are um, many metric. It's um, 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 delta um, encoding and something like that. Okay. And so those are options that you can set? Um, No, I'm not sure. No, 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 they are not. At the moment, there are not options. They are hard coded in the software. In the research paper I uh, showed earlier, they are, um, they run multiple benchmarks with uh, different compression algorithms, different um, compression settings, and they end up with GSIB and the block size of, I, I don't know. Okay. You have to read the paper. Okay. But they are hard coded at the moment. So that's the chunking, um, and in that case, we disable the chunking. Or we disable the compaction, not the chunking. <coughs> um, that's a screenshot from our uh, software EKG tool, which I showed earlier. And here you can see the red lines are um, the CPU usage for um, the Chronix ingester. The green lines are for Prometheus itself, the CPU usage. It's, um, maxed at 400% because we have uh, four cores. And the blue one is the chronic server. That's the memory consumption of our chronic ingester. It tops at about 120 megabytes. So I can show it in a, in a live demo. Um, here I have my Grafana. I have a Chronix data source and a Prometheus data source. And here is um, the Grafana dashboard for our ingester. And um, the ingester also publishes a Prometheus metrics, so you can scrape your ingester with Prometheus itself. Here's our configuration. Yeah, okay. That's the important part. It's the remote write which points to our Chronix ingester. And it scrapes some data, um, you know, the local host, the, the locally running Prometheus, and some demo Prometheus. Um, that's the default solar query interface. And if you run a query against it, we can see it found 1 million and something um, solar documents. And here you can see the fields I mentioned earlier, for example, the ID, the start date, the end date. And here is, for example, um, a Prometheus tag called handler, and it's, it is stored in the handler underscore S um, field of that solar document. And here is the compressed uh, chunk. So. Um, this is our Prometheus. It's running, um, uh, showing the memory chunks of our ingester. And now, the interesting thing, I have a dashboard, which is called Promix. 
it combines the lower data is coming from Prometheus and the upper data is coming from Chronix. It, that's this exact same metrics. Also, that is coming from the Prometheus data store and that is the data stored in Chronix. And here we can see that's about the 14 day mark. Um, Prometheus throw the data away. And in Chronix, they, they, it's also stored. And also interesting is where are the spikes? Yeah, there are some spikes. And I assume that's because um, uh, Prometheus does some downsampling if you're not zoomed in, if you zoom in. The spikes appear and the graphs look identical. <coughs> and that's it. Chronix is open source. You can find it on chronix.io. It's hosted on GitHub. Um, if you have questions, just, just ask them here or um, Twitter us, and we also have a Slack channel. And that's it. Thank you very much. Questions? <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, right. And you use yeah, you need to uh, use the Solar query language. Right. Um, I'm not aware of that, but I definitely remember that. Yeah. Okay. So when the ingestion does the batch, <coughs> does it like, uh, does it have a sort of system activity like the same as we can to be sending to the same ingester, like the same as we can send to any thing of the You mean here? Um, you could configure that this ingester is also uh, is always writing in that chronic server, but not based on the metric. So all metrics from that ingester will get in that chronic server if you point it directly to that chronic server. If you point it to the master node, it shards uh, on your sharding policy. For example, the ID field or the metrics field or something like that. Um, if you query uh, Chronix afterwards, it does the ordering for you. It doesn't matter in which uh, um, in which ordering you store the data. You always get it's in chrono chronological ordering if you query it afterwards. Does that? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Um, that's one big use case because um, we are not getting these metrics with Prometheus, but with a um, self-written collector which writes CSV files, and we import then the CSV files into our Chronix. So um, that's all data from the past, and Chronix um, sorts out the ordering, and then you get it in the right chronological order. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe. So the ingester is not queried. Um, no, but if I pre-aggregate some metrics and I can query them faster later. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, I would. I would actually put this in gradient, and I'd have products that pick them up from. Yeah. So you, you can have a run Prometheus, and then in the Prometheus remote write path where it sends the samples to the ingester, you can use free labeling to only send uh, pre-aggregated series there. <coughs> so that, that's 
Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, okay. Ah, yeah, here. Um, no, at the moment it's it's dump. It just uses um, the start and the end fields to drop data before some dates. Okay. It's not aware of shards or something like that. Okay, I have heard of tricks like that in Solar. I wasn't sure. Um, no, they are not uh, currently implemented. That or that one? No, the other one. No, the other one. Th this one. <laughs> <laughs> 